بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو ٹیکنیکل ایکسپلین دس از ٹیوٹوریل نمبر 2 آن سی ایس ٹی مائکرو ویو اسٹوڈیو اینڈ ان دس ٹیوٹوریل وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ڈیزائن اے مائکرو اسٹیپ پیچ اینڈ انٹینا فار 5G اپلیکیشنز اینڈ دا سبسٹریٹ وی ار گوئنگ ٹو یوز از روگرز آر ٹی 5880 وچ ڈائلیکٹرک کانسٹنٹ از 2.2 ناؤ دی ڈائمنشنز اف دا لینتھ اف مائی انٹینا ار دی فالوئنگ دا لینتھ اینڈ ویڈ of the ground plane is 6.6 mm and so is the length of substance and substrate and width of substrate which is also 6 mm height of the ground plane is 0.0175 mm height of substrate is 0.787 mm length of patch is 3.063 mm the width of patch is 4.236 mm width of feed line is 0.3 mm and length of feed line is 1.4685 mm notice that i have made these as bold why because these dimensions matters a lot while defining the characteristics of antenna while defining in which frequency range the antenna is operating so these are the secondary ones and the bold ones are the primary ones because they define the operational frequency of the antenna and these and this and these are calculated using the uh, using the equations of an antenna that we have discussed in our early videos of the micro step patch antennas we can also calculate these dimensions online how uh, i am specifically talking about the length of the patch and the width of the patch so i'm going to open my browser and i'm going to say uh, micro step patch antenna calculator when i search micro step patch antenna calculator on the top uh, in the google results i have this micro step patch antenna calculator so i can select my uh, the value of dielectric constant because i am using rogers rt5880 which dielectric constant is 2.22 uh, dielectric height i can change this to millimeter i am going to select 0.787 and operational frequency at which fre at which frequency we want to op uh, we want to design our antenna so i will go with 28 gigahertz and now this will calculate using these equations which we have discussed in our early earlier videos so when i press calculate we have these uh, width of the page is 4.232 mm and the length of the page is 3.06 mm and that's why i have found values from here and i have put it in uh, here which is more or less the same those values so now what we will do is that i am going to open up my cst and i am going to start designing my antenna again when i open up my cst this type of window is going to appear i am going to select new template and in the new template i am going to select microwave and radio frequency and optical and in the sub re sub region i am going to select antennas and then i am going to select that we want to design a micro step patch antenna so i am going to select patch next let us design it in time domain for time being then we have these units i am perfectly fine with these units and then i can give them minimum and maximum frequency range which is for example 20 to 40 you can give it the range of your the desired range of yours uh i will not calculate the far field for time being so that uh, uh our simulation is quick so now i'm going to press next now i'm good to go i'm going to click on finish and now the cst environment has opened when the cst environment is open uh taking a bit time okay so the, now the cst uh environment is open as you can have a look i have these shortcuts as well if i want the front view i can simply click the front view like this and to adjust to the view i can click on here which is reset view to default okay now first of all we need to design a ground plane but for this for uh, for that let us first define our parameters which was these length of the ground plane width of the ground plane height of the ground plane so if we can have a look here we have the parameter list here so what i am going to do is that i am going to drag this up so that it's more visible to you and to me so i am going to start adding parameters the first parameter was the length of ground plane 
uh, length of ground plane let me just name it as L fine and I can give it the value uh, of 6 millimeter which I said earlier fine I can also define it to be that this is my length and then we have the width of ground plane which is also 6 millimeter then I can define it here as length same procedure uh, what else do we have we have defined the length uh, we need to define the height of the ground plane which is denoted by symbol G so I am going to define it as 0 0.0175 mm. fine this is also my length I can define it as length over here and then we have next parameter uh, length of substrate and width of substrate are L and W which has already been defined height of substrate we can define the height of substrate which is H and that is 0 0.787 millimeter fine again this is length if I want to define I I can but if I don't it doesn't matter PST is intelligent intelligent enough to know that you are talking about the length and then we have the length of the page which is 3.063 millimeter so I'm going to denote the length of the page and I'm going to give it a value which is 3.063 millimeter fine and then we have the width width of the page which is uh, 4.236 millimeter 4.236 millimeter and then we have the width of feed line and length of feed so this is my width of feed line which is 0 0.3 millimeter and then I have the length of feed line which is 1.4685 mm 1.4685 mm so now we are done defining our parameters so now what I am going to do is that I am going to break it down because now I have defined my parameters now let us start designing we have already have these axes over here that, that is going to help us design our model so to start designing we need to click on modeling after click on modeling we need to click on this brick as soon as I click on brick the message appears double click first point in working plane or press es escape to start dialog box so what I am going to do is that I am going to press escape and for first I need to give it a name I need to give uh, name it as ground plane because we are designing a ground plane again we in in the center we want uh, to design a ground plane we want a ground plane in such a way that half of the ground plane is on the one side of the x-axis and half of the ground plane is on the other side of the x-axis so the ground plane was uh, the width of the ground plane was denoted by w so i can simply say minus w by 2 and w by 2 minus w by 3 is minus uh, minus w by 2 is minus 3 millimeter w by 3 is 3 millimeter so if you add those the total the total width is 6 millimeter similarly for y i need to define the length as minus l by 2 and l by 2 and finally we have the ground and this is my y axis you can have a look on y axis i have defined the length of the ground plane on x axis i define the width of the ground plane now we have the z axis so for z axis what i am going to do is that i am going to start with minus z and then i am going to reach to zero so the beneath the z axis we have the ground plane and then i need to uh, select the material by default the material is vacuum so what i am going to do is that i am going to select co copper and then i am going to select load from material library and in the material library I'm going to select I'm going to search copper and then we have this copper which is glossy material I am going to click on load and that will and then copper is loaded now can I can see the preview if you see the preview we are good enough to go so what we will do is that we will press ok after pressing ok we can reset the view now we have ground plan designed so the first step is done that we have designed our ground plan the second step is to design the substrate so for substrate again I am going to click on break and then I am going to click on escape key 
the, the substrate is actually on the top of the ground so I'm going to name it as substrate and then the dimension of substrate is same as ground so then then again we have the uh, minus w by 2 and w by 2 which was the same as ground and similarly the length of the substrate is equal to the length of the ground so we have the same now the ground did the ground ended on zero and the substrate is top is on the top of the substrate if you remember the dimensions of the ground i selected that ground should be of, of g thickness and it should start at minus g and it should extend to zero now on the top we want to be the substrate the substrate should start with zero and the height of the substrate needed needs to be h because we defined the height of the substrate as h and again i need to load the material from the material library and i want to search rogers rogers rt so rogers rt i am going to search we have rogers rt 5880 so i am going to load this and who is uh, reflection coefficient uh, sorry who is dialectic co uh, dialectic constant is 2.2 as given here it's been on his gear which is 2.2 so I'm going to load it and then I'm going to see the preview and I'm going to play, press OK. Now if we can have a look, our substrate is also designed. So we have the ground plan at the beneath and we can see here in the component. In the component one, we have the ground plan. This is my ground plan and on, on the top of the ground plan, we have the substrate. Again, I'm going to uh, go to the front view because thought that's more uh, convenient for me. Now the sec second step is also done, we have designed the ground, we have designed the, the substrate, now the third step is to design a page. So yet again I am going to click on the brick and I am going to click escape. Again I am going to name it as page, now the uh, width of the page was from minus wp divided by 2 to wp divided by 2. Because this is my center and this is my x-axis, so the width of the page is wp, and I want to uh, to to it, and I want it to be designed in the middle. And again, length of the page minus length of the page divided by two, and length of the page divided by two. So this is going to now design me the length of the page. Now we want the page to be top on the top of the substrate. If you remember. The substrate height was h and it started from 0 till uh, h so this should be on the top of the substrate and on the top of the self substrate means this should be at z minimum should be h and z many maximum should be again the page height should be same as the uh, ground height so it should be h plus z and again the page should be of copper so we can have a preview this is my preview and now i can press off so now we have three components designed our third step is also done we have designed the ground plan we have designed the substrate and we have designed the page the fourth step is to design the feed line and this is probably uh, the more difficult step now to design the feed line i will use my local uh, i will use the uh, local coordinate system as i told you earlier this is my global coordinate system and I can use the local coordinate system. To use the local coordinate system, I want the feed line, the microstep feed line, to extend from the start of the substrate and reach towards the page. So to do it, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to come here and I'm going to select on pick point and I'm going to select pick edge center. And when I uh, select pick edge center, I'm going to double click on the middle of this edge now this point has been selected so what i want to do is i want to place the local coordinate axis on this point so i'm going to come here and i'm going to click on here and now the local coordinate axis has been placed over here now i can simply go to the break and now press escape key and name it as feed line now as you can have a look we have the u which will be the width of the feed line and that will be minus wf divided by 2 and wf divided by 2 plus wf divided by 2 and the length of the feed line again it will be 0 to 
the length of the feed line why because i wanted the length of the feed line to start from zero which is at the start of this substrate and it extend till the length of the feed line and this is going to touch this feed line and then we have the w min and w x which is which was z axis in the global coordinate system again the pitch is also the 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 feed line is nothing but the extension of the microstrip page so the feed line is also placed on the top of the substrate so it should also start with h and it should go towards h plus z and g is the height of the ground plane how height of the page and same height of the microstrip feed line and we want to be the copper because our page is also copper so we can see at the preview we are satisfied with that and then we can press ok once I press OK, I can get rid of the local coordinate system by pressing this. Now if we can have a look, we have all the parts of the microstrip. Uh, OK, so this uh, feed line is not designed properly. So what we are going to do is that because we select the local coordinate system, so the we are going to go to the history. We have done a mistake and we can rectify our mistake in the history. So we have this history list and we have this uh, feed line. So we can change this here. Actually we have done the mistake in Z. Z should be from 0 to uh, from zero to G. Why? Because the point that we selected was, was on the top of the substrate. Because the point was on the top of the substrate, that's why I cannot uh, further tighten it so that's why the be best answer will be from 0 to g so i'm going to press ok and then i'm going to say done so i'm going to close this now let me see now everything is perfectly fine fine now everything is perfectly fine the only mistake that i made was that i uh, defined the w axis wrongly which i corrected now now we have the ground plan we have the page and the feed line we know that the page and the feed line should be connected together so we want to add these both components so i'm going to click on page and then i'm going to in the boolean of express operations i'm going to click on add and i'm going to click on feed line and then i'm going to press enter now the feed line and the page has been added so now the feed line is just an extension of the page and our antenna is now designed. So we have now designed the ground plan, the page and the substrate. So our whole antenna is now designed. This is our antenna which is now designed. Now the next step is the feeding technique. We need to feed this antenna. We will use the wave guide port to feed this antenna and to feed it First of all, I am going to select this uh, rotational plane and I am going to move it like this and then I am going to select the zoom in plane and I am going to zoom it over here. When I zoom this part, I am going to select pix, in the pix face I am going to select pix face and then I am going to double click on this face. Once I have double clicked on this face, I will come to simulation and then I am going to select the waveguide port. Once I select the waveguide port, this type of window is going to appear. Now what I am going to do, that in the X min, I will, I will add 3 star width of the feed line and similarly X max 3 star width of the feed line, 0 0.15 plus 3 star width of the feed line and then here I am going to add h plus z and in here i am going to add 4 h which is four times the height we can look at the preview and we are good to go so what we are going to do is that we are going to press off so let me reset the view so this is now my feed line so now i have also feeded this antenna so what I am going to do is that I am not going to add any field monitor at this stage because this is a basic video for 5G application. So what I am going to do is that in the home step I am going to start the simulation. So I am going to click on simulation and this will 
start the simulation and if you can have a look this is my progress uh, this is going to start uh, when this is running it means that my antenna is now simulating this is going to take some time depending upon the range of your frequency so if the range of your frequency is greater it will take more time if, it, if the range of your frequency is smaller it will take less time here we have designed a simple antenna and we designed though the range is a bit greater which is from 20 to 40 our, but our structure was very simple so it is not going to take a lot of time but if you have a complex structure if you have some array of antennas uh, and then uh, if you if your range is very high for example if you are running your simulation from 1 gigahertz to 100 gigahertz it is going to take a lot of time so depending upon your frequency range and depending upon your and depending upon the complexity of your design this is going to take uh, this CST simulation is going to take some time uh, but because we have very simple uh, antenna design here so this is not going to take much time so we are waiting for this simulation to be completed If there are any errors we will see these errors in messages over here if you can have a look we are still having uh, some we are not having any issues we are only having messages so we can uh, see the warnings and the errors in the messages uh, tab here and then we have the parameter list here messages progress is being shown here and again I want you to do use this type of uh, this uh, this step because it's very helpful we have the zoom in option here we have the pen option here we have the retreat option here and we have the activate the rotarian plan mode and then the reset view so if your view is distorted you can always reset your view by pressing this icon our uh, is almost completed now our results will be generated so that's it our results are generated our simulation is completed so what i am going to do is that today we are going to only see the 1d results so let me uh, move it up we have 1d results over here so in the world 1d results what's important is the s parameter so if we can have a look we have the s11 parameter here if we can have a look we have bandwidth from this point till this point why do we call it bandwidth because in this frequency range the return loss is less than minus 10 dB from some 25.6 or something till uh, 28 till 28 point something the return loss is less than minus 10 dB so we need to we can calculate the bandwidth from here other other thing is the resonant frequency of this antenna is around 27 gigahertz which is very close to the 20 gig 28 gigahertz that we uh, that we calculated based on our micro step antenna calculations so this is a 5g antenna and this resonates at 27 gigahertz and its uh, bandwidth is around from 25.8 to around 28 gigahertz which is around 2.4 or 2.5 gigahertz and then we have also the VSWR voltage standing wave ratio now the range of frequency for which this return loss is less than minus 10 dB the same range VSWR will be less than 2 because minus 10 dB is less than 2 if you can have a look if you can see in this frequency from around you can have a look that 28 this from there from 26 point something the return loss is less than due till there so bandwidth can also be cal calculated can be defined as the range of frequency for which the voltage standing wave ratio is less than 2 so this is 
say that that's all for today if you like my video please subscribe to my channel technically explained thank you